Coming up on a special edition of NAZ Today, an update on the COVID-19 pandemic. Plus, the shift to online classes from NAU and other universities, students and faculty tell us how they've been adjusting to the shift. Although airlines are canceling flights, people are still flying. I'll tell you about their experience. There have been different perspectives that people have been sharing about how they're handling the virus. So I spoke with the Phoenix doctor to share his perspective about how we are handling this epidemic. The news starts now. You're watching NAZ Today, Northern Arizona's local news. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of NAZ Today. I'm Cristiana Ramos. And I'm Paige Kenny. Thanks for tuning in. The coronavirus pandemic continues to accelerate with no indication of when it will slow down, especially here in the United States. The U.S. is currently sitting at number one with the most confirmed cases of COVID-19 in a country at more than 572,000. Spain is seeing the second most cases with nearly 170,000. All around the world, we surpassed 1.9 million. The numbers are also rising in Arizona with more than 3,500 confirmed cases as of 1.30 p.m. today, Mountain Standard Time. This is a graphic of a breakdown of the number of cases in Coconino County. Health officials update this daily on their website. As you can see, positive cases are up to 242 with 21 deaths. The number of cases increased are increasing as the age group gets older and the greater Flagstaff area makes up 19% of the cases in Coconino County. One area in northern Arizona where we are seeing a majority of the cases are the tribal communities. The number of cases on the Navajo Nation rose to 700 today. 24 Navajo members have lost their lives and there are, seven, uh, there are signs that the Navajo Nation is quickly becoming one of the growing hotspots in Arizona. To combat the spread of the virus, Navajo Nation authorities imposed a 57-hour curfew on residents. Coconino County followed suit, extending the curfew to neighboring county islands. NAZ Today's Sakya Casoyas has the story. COVID-19 is hitting the Navajo Nation hard as the global pandemic rages on. The sharp increase in numbers left Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez little choice but to impose weekend curfew on residents living on the reservation. In a video forum called Protect the Sacred, a video conference call with Hollywood celebrities and Navajo healthcare workers last Friday, Nez said it had to be done. Uh, profession, our first responders, uh, thank you so much for keeping us all safe. And the reason why I bring that up is that we have a curfew here on the Navajo Nation. and all of these healthcare uh, providers, our doctors, our nurses, police officers, they're pleading with all of us. And that's just not here on Navajo, all across the country. Safest place to be is at home. Residents caught outside their homes were met with citations and fines of up to $1,000 and or 30 days in jail. This order included visitors and tourists. Navajo President Nez and Vice President Myron Lizer have both tested positive for the coronavirus and are currently in quarantine. Some residents took video of the surreal experiences of deserted main streets and celebrating Easter indoors in their living rooms. Good morning. This is to the city main street. Hardly anybody's driving around. No vehicles. <clears throat> Maybe just the semis. Recently, there have been reports of shortages of healthcare supplies and other basic essentials on the reservation. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey sent the Arizona National Guard to help out. Soldiers have been making deliveries of protective gear and other essential supplies to the Navajo people. Saying by tweet that, quote, we are with them, and our team is all hands on deck to support them, end quote. With the curfew lifted, hopefully residents on the Navajo Nation continue to listen to officials and experts going forward. Saki Kalsoyas, NAZ Today. The Arizona Department of Health Services introduced a new set of coronavirus data on their website over the weekend. Their website now shows the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Arizona by zip code. It's displayed as a map on Arizona in which you can click on a specific area and it will tell you the number of confirmed cases. The data shows that the zip code with the most confirmed cases in Arizona is 86047, which is in northern, northeastern Arizona. In Flagstaff, zip code 86004 has 30 confirmed cases. 
86001 is seeing 12 cases. 86005 and 86046 are seeing one to five cases as of today. All around the world, education has endured lots of changes. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey ordered that all Arizona schools were to remain closed for the rest of the semester. In a joint statement with Superintendent of Pub Public Instruction, Kathy Hoffman, Ducey said Arizona's, quote, number one priority will continue to be health and safety. This forced elementary, middle, and grade schools across Arizona, including those in Flagstaff, to quickly switch to online delivery. <laughs> It may seem like it was a long time ago when schools were full of life. Now they're empty, not even a sound of a pencil hitting the ground. It was devastating news for Chloe Pozar's family. When they announced that school was done, like, like we weren't going back into school, we're doing school at home, um, was very hard for our family. Although students have the option to keep their grade where it was before the closures, Flagstaff Unified School District wants to encourage students to keep learning. That's why they have launched a new online resource called the Digital Learning Hub. What we've been doing is uh, this week we provided kind of some baseline resources through our digital hub um, that was launched last week. Um, on Monday, we're going to have a big rollout that are actually going to be lesson plans by grade um, that will be available for all families. And if families don't have access to the Internet, the district is relying on an old school solution, classes by postage. And then what we're doing is we're coordinating resources that we're actually going to mail out to those families. Um, we're really sensitive to, you know, making sure that we have access for all students. And so we've got that procedure set up to where people will coordinate with the uh, administrators and then we'll do mailings directly to the house. Parents can get discouraged when teaching their kids, especially working with technology. But Pozar says once you get the hang of it, it's as easy as pie. It's a learning curve, definitely a learning curve. Like, what am I doing on here? Because I'm not a teacher. I don't do the lesson plans. But I went over it, and he he kicked butt. He finished it all, like, in, in one afternoon. He completed all of his work. But once you get the hang of it, oh, my goodness, it's awesome. It's really a great tool. But let's face it. Some kids probably enjoy being out of school for a while and they can get restless, so their motivation to do the work might just go out the window. That's why teachers say they've been trying to stay in touch with students to not only make sure they get credit for completed work, but by also to motivate and support them. My middle schooler had a phone call today from a teacher just saying, like, is she doing okay? I noticed she asked a question on Google Classroom, and I wanted to go over it with her and make sure she understands it. So I got a phone call from a teacher. I get emails all the time from the teachers. Um, they're very, they're, they're communicating very well with us. Pozar also says getting students on a set schedule can help as well. The digital learning hub is open to the public and will be updated every Monday with new resources for each grade level. Students with paper materials can reach out to their teachers to find an alternative way to turn in completed work. Not only is the Flagstaff Unified School District impacted by COVID-19, but many university classes are now being taught online. At Northern Arizona University, this created some challenges for students and faculty. NAZ Today's Sheridan Moronic has more. With online classes now the norm, NAU has followed suit, causing unique struggles for the rest of the spring semester. Students like Haley Verbeck are taking online classes, trying to keep up with their degree programs. But being at home isn't always the easiest place to focus. Being at home is a lot less motivating to do work than being at school because at school I feel like I have to do a purpose like I have to do things while I'm at school but here I have so many other options to do and I'm just like eh, I don't have to do this. While some students are struggling with the switch so are professors. NAU geology lecturer Kelsey Windsor has over 300 students to teach now in an online format. And for me I think it's easier than a lot of people in our school, because um, I don't have field or lab requirements for these classes. Um, so the, the big thing has been recording lectures. Educators across the country were forced to move their classes online in the middle of the semester in a very short time, which is quite a feat. 
Even though Windsor feels her teaching is relatively the same, working online brings a whole new set of challenges. It's more for me trying to balance what I what I feel like are my responsibilities to student mental health, like letting people have it easier and, and letting people be more flexible and still trying to keep up some sort of rigor that justifies this is a class. <laughs> As much as students and faculty may hope to return to in-person classes in the fall, the university's quick switch to online learning may well have saved lives. The question now is, when will things finally return to normal? Sheridan Moronic, NAZ Today. Around the state university, students who live in dormitories are being asked to move out. Arizona State University students have until April 15th to move off campus. Eligible students will receive a $1,500 credit. The University of Arizona is urging students to not return to campus to retrieve things they left in their dorm rooms if they have left, or left campus already. This is due to the stay-at-home order from Arizona. U of A is preparing to vacate all dorm rooms on campus this week. Student belongings will be packed by housing leaders and stored in a local university warehouse. NAU is also offering a credit to those who are able to move out by April 16th. The credit represents 25% of this semester's housing and dining charges. That 25% will be applied to outstanding balances that are on students' accounts. And any remaining credit will be applied to next semester charges. As fear from the coronavirus spreads faster than the virus itself, it's hard to know what's true about COVID-19 and what isn't. And as today's Christian Ayala met with a Phoenix doctor, Roberto Ruiz, who provides a professional perspective on the virus and panic surrounding it. The coronavirus pandemic has been an intimidating topic over the past few months, with populations stocking up on supplies such as food and medical needs in order to keep themselves quarantined. We have never had an, a pandemic of this nature over the last 100 years of this magnitude. You have over 180 countries that have been exposed to this virus. Ruiz says the worst is yet to come for northern Arizona, particularly the Navajo Nation. One of the areas that we're seeing huge uptake is in northern Arizona in the Flagstaff area, most related to the Navajo uh, Indian population in that part of the state. Um, which is of concern, and the facilities in Flax that will need to deal with this crisis over the next several weeks. Medical experts like Ruiz agree that the key to combating this pandemic continues to be mitigation, that is, staying home, social distancing, and personal hygiene to prevent the virus from spreading. Just practice hand washing, um, cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze, you grab a tissue, just cover it. Um, do recommend wearing a mask every time you go out. When it comes to treatments, researchers throughout the world are currently developing therapeutics such as oral therapies, antiviral therapies, and even vaccines to help stop the epidemic. I think this is a strategy that most physicians now are adopting, especially in New York, where they're diagnosing and treating early with those patients. Although research is ongoing for these treatments, experts say it can take a year or more for vaccines to become available. We cannot really depend on that at the present time. So we have to be implementing these uh, other therapies, off-label therapies, uh, early in the disease, and of course mitigation to prevent this from uh, spreading any further. Christian Ayala, NAZ Today. While everyone stays inside to protect themselves and others from the virus, it can be hard for some essential personnel to practice social distancing. And NAZ Today's Aaron Vitito spoke with Flagstaff Police about how they're managing to fight crime while still keeping a safe distance. Flagstaff has been looking a little different lately, but even with less people out and about, Sergeant Charles Hernandez says Flag PD is still doing its job. There's a lot of preventative things that we've implemented. Out on the street, everyone is issued a kit that contains uh, rubber gloves, masks, and uh, goggles to prevent any contact with the eyes as well. Inside the station, Hernandez says they've been taking the necessary precautions to keep themselves and others virus-free. We've implemented um, regular body temperature checks, so when an officer or a person working in the building arrives for their shift, 
They uh, check their body temperature with the thermometer that the department's provided to ensure that they're not um, presenting any fever or any symptoms. And we've also asked that if they do present symptoms that they stay home and uh, self-quarantine. The good news, with all the self-quarantine going on, the department has seen a decrease in some calls. Crimes consistent with burglary or theft have decreased, I think, because there are more people at home. In addition to theft, Hernandez says there's also a drop in car crashes, but that not every type of crime is down. We have seen an increase in some of the uh, public intoxicant crimes. And some crimes they might have expected to rise in a time like this, Hernandez says, have actually remained the same. For the most part, while well, we haven't seen an uptick in uh, domestic violence, uh, from our anal analysis that we've continually to uh, continue to monitor. The department is still working on gathering the numbers on crimes they regularly deal with. But as far as enforcing social distancing, Hernandez says that people may be charged with a misdemeanor for not following guidelines. When we do contact someone who's not engaging in essential services, we ask for voluntary compliance. And then if we don't uh, achieve our voluntary compliance, we do have the tool of enforcement with um, the charges, misdemeanor charges. But so far, he says officers have not had to do this yet. We haven't had to uh, implement any charges at this point. Everyone in uh, the community has been uh, law-abiding and complying with the orders. Aaron Vitito, NAZ Today. While many are choosing to stay at home, some people must still travel. In terms of preventing the spread of COVID, one of the scariest ways to travel is by plane. Reporter Cross War has the story. I am one of the fortunate people who gets to work from home, but my mother Lisa War ended up having to travel from Arizona to Colorado and back to attend a family funeral. It reminded me much of a sci-fi movie as long as I've been on the face of this earth, I have never seen an airport um, like a ghost town. And uh, the majority of people were um, being very conscious about social distancing. The airlines uh, in general were amazing and they were making sure that people were not crowded together, even, even lining up to get on the plane or anything. Concerns over catching a cold or flu in the tight quarters of an airplane are nothing new, but the potential to spread COVID-19 is a much riskier proposition. Even so, War says her fellow travelers remained in good spirits. The airlines were very lighthearted about it and they explained to everybody that this would be one of the few times that everyone could stretch out if they wanted to. So nobody even sat in um, sequential rows from each other. Everybody was able to absolutely space out. She says this experience has made her much more aware of the potential danger of traveling. It made me a little more conscious of, in general, how lax we are when we travel, whether it be to other states, in an airport, in a store. We exchange money constantly, we use restrooms, we touch sinks, and probably for the future, I'm going to be a lot more aware just washing my hands in general. Many flights have been canceled across the country, but planes are still flying. But the CDC is encouraging people to stay home and avoid unnecessary travel. Cross War, NAZ Today. NAU is making use of Klein Library's high-tech maker lab to help local healthcare workers. NAZ Today's Kate Gillis has the story. Healthcare providers around the world are experiencing a massive shortage of supplies for their medical staff, including Northern Arizona Healthcare here in Coconino County. Since the coronavirus pandemic, NAH has been looking for community assistance and Northern Arizona University has stepped up to the plate and has brought some innovation for its medical providers. Located in NAU's Klein Library, Maker Lab's 3D printers are typically used for student art projects, but now they're being called to the front line of the pandemic in Northern Arizona. They were looking for ideas about printing 3D masks, could we help them? So we made 100 uh, masks um, and uh, we printed them over about a 48 hour period. Besides gowns, our next most uh, critical shortage is masks, specifically the N95 masks. We actually do something called fit testing where we test to make sure the seal in the mask is tight enough that you're not able to smell anything 
Um, so this really filters out even the smallest particles, including viruses. The demand for gowns and masks across the nation has led to a drastic increase in cost, making partnerships like the one with NAU's Maker Lab crucial to Northern Arizona healthcare. An N95 mask normally cost us 69 cents. We're now paying $8 a mask for it. Surgical gowns or isolation gowns were 50 cents. Previously, we're now paying $5 per gown, a thousand percent increase. The 100 masks provided by Maker Lab are currently undergoing diligent testing before they can be used. This to ensure the safety of both healthcare providers and patients. You know, we're the largest 3D printing environment in Northern Arizona. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to contribute to the community to support county needs as well as the Flagstaff community needs. Uh, we already have a number of requests from other institutions, other organizations in the county uh, to help out um, uh, in printing masks. And so um, we're coordinating with a variety of offices on campus to help make that happen. Kate Gillis, NAZ Today. The CDC recommends anyone going out in public should wear a face covering to prevent the spread of COVID-19. NAZ Today's Alexandra Villajo explains how you can make a simple mask to protect yourself. This CDC recommendation comes after the agency concluded that non-medical grade masks may be an imperfect but nonetheless partially effective way to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Face coverings do not necessarily have to be surgical masks or the preferred N95 respirators, which for now are reserved for healthcare workers. But you can improve your chances of avoiding the virus with materials you may already have on hand. Here is a simple way to make a face covering out of an old t-shirt and some hair ties or rubber bands. Tests have shown that t-shirt material, especially in two or more layers, can significantly reduce the transmission of small particles. To make this mask, you will need to cut a square that measures 22 inches on each side for an adult and 18 inches for a child. The square will need to be folded like so, with the hair ties slipped onto each side. The open end of the fabric tucks into the opposite open end, and the mask is now complete. The mask can be disassembled and washed after use, and then assembled again when needed. This is a quick and easy way to protect yourself and others from COVID-19 and help flatten the curve. Alexandria Vallejo, NAZ Today. As the nation's doctor, I often get asked, what should I do if I think I might have coronavirus? People who are sick should stay home. You don't go to an emergency room. You don't go to a clinic. You get on the phone and you ask for advice and instructions from your physician. We don't want you to go into the ER or the doctor's office without talking to them first because you might spread coronavirus to someone else. Please visit coronavirus.gov for more information. Why should I care about the 2020 census? Every 10 years, the census counts everyone living in the U.S. Count everyone living with you. Even kids! Our numbers help shape funding and services. For all these things. That's a lot of stuff. Your responses are safe and secure. No matter who you are or where you're from. We have reasons to care. Shape your future. Start here at 2020census.gov. Hello, Northern Arizona student forecaster Aaron Vidito here. It feels like it's been a while, so let's start talking about weather, specifically precipitation. It's no secret we got some rain across the state today, specifically the northern part of the state, as you can see this big scary blob covering Flagstaff. As the day goes on, though, these uh, clouds, all the precipitation has been moving eastward out of the state, but we are still going to see some rain uh, tonight. But it is going to start clearing up for tomorrow, and it's actually going to be a little drier than average. I know that seems weird after the weekend that we have just endured. But looking over here, a sweet return to warmer temperatures. Tuesday is going to be a little dry, but average on Wednesday, and she's going to, uh, going to go up from there. Friday, we're going to see kind of a dip, a return of some clouds, and there is going to be a chance of some more precipitation, but it's probably going to be a weak system if we even get anything. Taking a look at Flagstaff currently in the here and now, we're seeing 46 degrees, pretty close to our high, mostly cloudy, some scattered showers here and there, 
but really it's just clouds at the moment. As you can see from our relative humidity, it was relatively humid and winds picked up a little bit. They're gonna pick up a little bit more, maybe reach up to 23 miles per hour, but at the moment coming from the west, 18 miles per hour, and those winds are pushing that storm away from us. So pretty happy about that as much as I like the rain. I also like warmer temperatures. I'm excited for that. Today we saw a high of 47 degrees, low of 23, but I wanna look at our precipitation at the moment. This is as of five o'clock from the Flagstaff Airport, 0.13 inches, which brings us to 6.46 inches since January 1st, pretty close to our average, 6.89. If you remember earlier this year, we were abnormally dry, a lot, um, really below average. All that moisture from March and from the past week have really helped us out, uh, putting us almost about average for, uh, for that. Looking across the state at our high temperatures, we saw 47 here in Flagstaff, 58 Sedona, 54 Payson, basically just kind of cooler temperatures all over uh, the state and a lot of precipitation in uh, the northern parts of the state. Looking tonight at our low, we are going to see uh, 23 degrees with a slight chance of rain and snow showers, but that's going to clear up at about 11 p.m. Pretty much setting the stage for tomorrow with our high again of 47 degrees, no change there. But it will be a lot drier, a lot more sunny, uh, probably melt all that water on the ground right now. Looking across for uh, the state for tomorrow, we're seeing forecast temperatures 61 in Sedona, low of 38, 61 also in Payson, 80 in Phoenix. Basically kind of on par for today, kind of warming up for tomorrow, beginning a warning, uh, warming trend, but really that trend's going to start on Wednesday. If you'll notice, 47 is going to be our high for tomorrow, but 57 will be our high for Wednesday. That is right. I had to triple check that number. 10 degree difference, and that's just going to continue throughout the week. 60 on Thursday and Friday. Seems like it's setting up for a pretty good weekend, right? No. Saturday, we're going to see a 10% chance of rain and snow showers. Like I said, though, it's going to be a weak system if we get anything, but the high is going to dip down to 58 but compared to what we've had uh, lately in the 40s, really not too bad. Now I've enjoyed the spotlight here in uh, weather, but we're gonna have a look at sports when we come back with Kate Gillis. Stay with us. Is my 2020 census data safe? After sending your census response, your personal information is kept safe. By law, it can't be shared with any other government agency, law enforcement, or landlord. No one. So take your 2020 census with peace of mind. Shape your future. Start here. Visit 2020census.gov. You have to stay home. Not just to protect yourself, but to protect others. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Two, arm's length. Just because you're at home doesn't mean that we can't be alone together. Together. Welcome back to NAZ Today. I'm your sports reporter, Kate Gillis. And as we all know, NAU men's basketball had a resurgence last year, winning 16 games for the first time in six seasons. But if they want to replicate success, they'll just have to, oh, I don't know, replace three out of their top four scores. Thanks to the graduation of versatile big man Brooks to Bishop and the recent transfers of guard Cameron Satterwhite and forward Bernie Andre, who's heading to the American East Conference Powerhouse Vermont, a program that has earned an NCAA tournament berth in three of the past four seasons. Here's what he had to say to our very own Cristiano Ramos. Mark kind of just stood out to me the whole time. Um, they're losing their uh, player of the year guy who who's, we're pretty similar, so they kind of want it. They're, they're looking for somebody that could come in and kind of do what he can do to take them back to the NCAA tournament. And I feel like that's something I could do. So, I mean, they're a winning program already. And um, I think I could bring the same thing I kind of brought to NAU for two years there. Satterwhite also felt that itch for the big dance and verbally committed to Montana, a Big Sky team that has participated in the NCAA tournament the last two seasons. I mean, that's one of my goals is to get back to the NCAA tournament and uh, be a big part of that. So I'm glad that I'm um, at least at a program that is accustomed to going to the tournament. Um, so I'm excited. 
And even with the departures, head coach Shane Burkhart is eager to get rolling with the roster that he's got. I'm very excited about our recruiting class. I am way, way, way excited about the guys that we have coming back who are committed to NAU. No hard feelings whatsoever. And again, we're going to be focused on the guys who are here. The objective of NAU's two transfers reflect that of NAU. Coach Burkhart says the goal is the same every year as it was for this last year. Quote, we want to play in an NCAA tournament. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has forced people to adapt, changing their way of living, and has demanded sacrifices from us all. A big sacrifice came from the athletes here at NAU who were directly affected. Two NAU athletes were stripped of the remainder of their seasons, one of them being the most dominant and decorated athletes NAU may have ever seen looking to finish off his career in the midst of a historic track and field season. The other, a rising star in diving, who qualified for her first ever nationals that she could not attend. Um, I still feel extremely honored that I made it, but not being able to go is definitely a letdown. The competition was over. I saw on the scoreboard that I had made it, like in the place to go to nationals. And immediately when I saw that, I just broke down in tears. Like I was extremely happy because I think Going to nationals or qualifying for nationals was like the biggest, my biggest goal that I had. We've only had three divers on the women's side ever make it to NC2As. That was, a, she was very disappointed. I feel so bad for the other students who are seniors and had qualified for like the first time ever and they can't go at all. So that kind of breaks my heart more. You know, the whole entire NAU track and field team and the whole entire school were backing us up to try to do something big at these indoor championships and to have it be canceled on us. It was very disheartening, felt very sad, and I, it was the first time I cried in a while, not because I didn't get to compete, but it, but it was potentially could be my last time repping the Lumberjacks. It kind of puts you in a respect of like, hey, we shouldn't take this for granted. Thank you, Christiana, for being able to catch up with a three-time national champion, Tyler Day. Paige? Back to you. Thank you for watching this special edition of NAZ Today. I'm Paige Kenny. Back to you, Christiana. Hey, thanks, Paige, for joining us today. It is Paige and I's last show for NAZ Today, along with the other graduating seniors who unfortunately weren't able to attend today to say their goodbyes. With that being said, we hope you tune in on all of our social media platforms at NAZtoday.com for more stories on COVID-19. We'll keep you updated. Stay healthy, stay safe. Have a great night.